everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And right here are all of my green and green adjacent acid dyes from five different brands. And we are gonna do some crude swatches of these colors today to compare the relative hues of the dry dye powders. This is something that's really helpful to do if you like to dye yarn with the dry powder directly or speckle, because then you know not to use two colors that are really, really similar with powder when you're hoping to have a subtle but more visible difference. Doing crude swatches like this is actually something I started in a video I think I shared at the end of 2022, where I had tried to use Jacquard's Chartreuse and Kelly Green in one project. And I expected there to be a little bit more of a difference between these two colors, but when I was speckling with them, the colors ended up feeling really, really similar and nearly indistinguishable. There wasn't enough contrast. And so I like to do these dry powder comparisons between colors because then I know, okay, if I'm gonna do a speckling colorway and I want five different greens, I don't wanna pick both Chartreuse and Kelly Green from the Jacquard line. So I right here I have 27 colors. Some of them are probably not technically green, but I picked because they either have a leaf in the name, which evokes a little bit of a green lean, or they have a name that is very similar to names in other lines that do lean a little bit green. Uh, and so part of this comparison is also to show that the name of a color doesn't necessarily represent always what you might have in your head. Uh, and so like what one brand calls chartreuse maybe is different from what another brand calls chartreuse. Although I think that those ones are pretty similar. It's the Kelly Green that I think is the bigger difference. But who knows, we will see once we get started. But the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of sort these colors into groups for two different pans of dyeing yarn. In each of the pans that we're gonna dye, we're gonna start off with 200 grams of Nitpick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. And I have four cups of water here, but things are cold and there is no acid yet. If we wanted to get a better sense of how colors might break or the pigments separate, then doing this warm with some acid in there would be a really helpful way to do it because some pigments strike fast and some spread more, but we might still see evidence of breaking in here today. But since there's enough colors that I'm gonna have to do this over two pans, having things cold means that we can compare the two pans side by side at the end. But now I'm gonna go put on my deluxe wrapper respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and we're gonna start our swatching. We are gonna start with our darkest green colors. We have Dharma Forest Green, uh, which is a color I adore. Uh, you can see that it does have a fair amount of blue uh, for a deep green. It does lean slightly teal. And we're going to compare this to just a little bit of powder on my popsicle stick, Jacquard Spruce, uh, which I don't think I've ever looked at side by side. Spruce, I think Spruce is a great name for this color. It feels a little bit dustier, a little bit less teal, uh, in my opinion, but they are fairly similar. I guess the forest green is a hair brighter. But now we're gonna move in to some more primary kind of greens. We've got Jacquard Emerald Green, which I'm gonna put here in the middle. Ooh, this has a lot of blue in it. Uh, a lot of greens will break. I'm not sure how many pure green acid dye pigments there really are. And so a lot of them might be mixtures and combinations of other pigments, just like purples. Okay, Dharma also has an emerald green. And whoa, look at the difference here. Uh, Jacquard's emerald green is very blue, whereas Dharma's is much more green feeling. I'm gonna tap this out a little bit more to get a nice sense of the color. Now Dharma's emerald green is a color that I know takes more time to bind to yarn overall and so it tends to spread a lot. But it's funny, I don't think I've ever looked at those two colors side by side. And that's why it's fun to do this kind of comparison. Now the next color we're gonna look at 
is called green. <laughs> this is green from Paradise Fibers. And I know from experience, I mean, I've even had some videos on this topic. It is not, oh, you know what? It's feeling way more green to me. <laughs> uh, it actually feels so much like spruce and forest green, which is surprising to me. From the color swatches on the Paradise Fibers website, I expected it to be more like emerald, but you can see it's fairly blue for a color that's just called green. The beautiful color, just not as green as I would have expected. Okay, next up is Dharma's Kelly Green, which is a color I haven't used that much. Ooh, but this is another bright green. I would say it's a hair, just a hair more blue than emerald. Maybe it feels a hair brighter but ultimately very, very similar to emerald. Dharma also has a Kelly green, but looking at the powder, see how yellow the powder of it is? And the color here feels quite different. Now the color in the center maybe has a little bit of some similarities, but the spread here is very, very bright, almost neon, very, very yellow. And so, I mean, here we have two colors with the same name, but they just look extremely different. Next up is Amazon Green from Greener Shades. And this color, it's, you know, a little bit blue. I think at the time I wanted it to be a little bit brighter, but comparing it to the Paradise Fibers Green, which now is feeling very blue, this is definitely a green. It fits in the green family very nicely. I'm not realizing I probably could have spread out these colors a bit more on here, but that is okay. We're coming in now with Dharma's Chartreuse. And this is a very, very yellow, extremely yellow green. And this Chartreuse actually feels very distinct from the Jacquard's Kelly Green. But I remember when I tried to use this Jacquard's Chartreuse, next to Kelly Green. You can see that we've got some big similarities between the two. They are ultimately different. I used a lot of dye, but I think that using them side by side, they feel quite similar. But what I haven't done is compared those two colors at a 1% depth of shade. Uh, maybe that's something that we'll do in the future. Okay, next up is one of my favorite colors. Uh, this is Radioactive from Derma. And this color, when it heats up, it will be a little bit less yellow, or maybe it'll just take a little bit of time. You can see that the chartreuse is turning a little bit greener. This definitely has a blue pigment that uh, speckles, and then it spreads more with that neon yellow, because there isn't a fluorescent blue acid dye pigment, and so it has to be a blend. So we know that that one breaks well. Now we're coming in with Lichen. A color that is one that I really, really should use more, and I don't. It's one I really, really like. I think I'm gonna spread it more, the new popsicle stick, a little more over here too. You can see that this is a lot more mossy, a lot more olive, but I believe it breaks really, really beautifully with speckles. Sour Apple is a great sour candy green. Um, it's not quite neon, but it is like a great yellow green kind of color here. It's not as bright as some of those greens there, but it does well for like, I don't know, being a nice yellow green. And finally, we're gonna finish this one up with some colors that maybe are more brown leaning, but the names could be a green. So we're gonna start here in the middle uh, and I'm gonna get some more of it. This is Olive Brown from Derma. And this color, I need to do more explorations with it, but it does behave slightly differently, whoops, depending on if it's hot or cold and when the acid is present. But you can see that is very, very brown. The reason why I brought olive brown into the mix 
is because I wasn't sure if Olive from Jacquard was going to be more of a green or be more brown. Oh, it is more brown. That surprised me. Um, it's more of a reddish brown. They're very different colors, but I think from the color on the label, you can see why you might think that that could have been green or brown. And so I figured it was worth including. But those two olives are quite different. And then since I knew we were bringing some browns in, and this one is called leaf, <laughs> I thought we would bring in a little bit of some tobacco leaf. And this angle <laughs> is hard. This is a very, I think this one might lean a little bit more green than the other ones actually. I'm gonna top it out with my finger. Certainly it's more yellow leaning than these other colors. And now it's hard to say if there is some breaking or what. I do see some green elements in all three of these brown colors, uh, probably because to make them they have green pigments in them. And so this is our first pan. But now I'm gonna set this aside so we can go ahead and dye up some more colors. We'll do a lot more blue leaning greens and some more muted greens as well. But we'll bring this pan back to compare with the other ones so that way we can see all of the colors in the same light so it's easy to compare pan to pan. Okay, hey, here we are with pan two. And we are gonna start with some moss green, which is a beautiful mossy color. It is more muted, but still very, very green. Avocado is a color that breaks. Surprisingly, it can feel very, very teal, uh, but there are some like browns and stuff in here that usually come out towards the end. When you've mixed, there's some yellows that just take some more time to dissolve. I don't use it a ton because you expect this color and you see more of that. If I want this kind of color, I'm more likely to go for moss just because I find avocado to be a bit tricky. Sage leaf is a awesome, fun color. It is soft, like you might think from the sage plant. You can see I used a fair amount of powder and there is a softness to it. It is more pastel than some of these other colors. And so if you want, I mean, even looking at the little swatch, you can tell that it is a little bit less pigmented, but it can feel a little bit bluer at times. There it is more of a green and it's feeling very true to its name. I would call that a very sagey color. Next up we have pistachio and I'm using a lot of the powder right here. The color is very soft and actually using a lot of it is quite yellow. Um, I do find that it does feel fairly soft, but yeah, I guess looking at like the, the swatch here, I would expect it to be a little bit more blue. I forget if it finishes more blue, but that's why another reason why we do this exercise because this is a very pastel green, but using the dry powder, it's not necessarily that pastel. And so it's useful to see how the colors go. Okay, we've got a new recent favorite of mine. Let's get a little bit more. This is Spearmint Breeze. It is a bright blue green and it does lean minty when you make it more pastel. Uh, I believe that I used this when I did a mint chocolate chip colorway. It is wonderful. But again, the more pastel, and so if I, if I bring it out more, you can see the tone of that pastel is fairly minty, but the color and the speckles of it are brighter. Uh, and so again, that's why we do things like this. My version of sea spray is a slightly older one. And so I think some of the new versions of this color do lean more blue than the one we have here. But it's definitely a more green leaning blue than purple leaning and it definitely has green elements to it. And so in here, I think towards the center, maybe later we'll see some more of the green. Bright Aqua is a color that definitely is way more blue leaning, but compared to say like Frozen and True Turquoise, it is a hair more yellow than those colors. And so I did want to include it. 
Now, of all the brands that I'm trying today, uh, the Pro Chemical and Dye Wash Bath Acid Dyes, I don't really have a green color. They have multiple greens, I just didn't buy one. And so the color I am bringing in here is called Sea Breeze, um, which I've pulled in because we've got Spearmint Breeze and Sea Spray, but this is the Pro Chem's really bright, like bright blue. And so, yeah, I guess when I bought the dyes, I did not buy a green. <laughs> And so um, it's not so much that it's missing, it's just that I didn't have one here. But the nice thing about having this color here is that if we compare it to the bright aqua, you can now see the more yellows in that bright aqua color. Next up is Dharma's Teal Green. And this is a color that I adore. I use this all the time. And it's, what's funny though, as I pulled in a lot of it, I wonder if I should have compared this to like Paradise Fibers Green. I guess we'll look at those together in a moment. Um, it's very pigmented. I used a lot of dye here. Um, it can be nice and dark. It's not that bright when it's more pastel, but there's other colors in the Dharma line that are the bright blue greens. Next up is Jacquard's Teal. And at first glance, they do feel similar. I'm now wondering what this one is gonna feel like uh, when I compare it a little bit to the spruce color. And it's funny, it does feel fairly similar to spruce to me right now. Okay, I know we're gonna do this comparison with the other pan. But because we're almost out of colors anyway, um, I'm gonna bring in Jacquard Spruce right here. Okay, and it's just even a little bit, but you can see that this is even a little bit more muted and I think a little bit green, more green, a little bit more gray even, and a little bit less bright than the Jacquard Teal. So they are different. Uh, the speckles would probably be very, very similar, so I might not use both of them, but that could work. That could be a combination that we should try at some point. Now, sometimes colors go out of stock and are discontinued, and other times they are a muck. <laughs> and right here, this is Dharma's Muck Green. I forget what year it was, but this was a limited edition color that isn't going to be reproduced. It's probably something that they mixed that was not perfect. Uh, it wasn't the color that it was supposed to be. And so they have released it as like a limited edition color. And it is way more yellow than teal and is a fairly unique color in Dharma's line. It's beautiful, I adore it. Um, but it's not something that is readily available anymore um, because when it was sold out, it was a mistake batch. And so it's not, it doesn't exist something you can buy. And the final color is one that is unreleased at this point. This should become commercially available at some point, but right now I can't list its brand or its name, but I wanted to include it in here to have it. And so once this is available for purchase uh, through the brand, then I will update the swatch picture on my website. Uh, I have a compilation photo with a bunch of swatches and I will update that. But it is a very true green, not particularly bright, but a nice, nice green. And here we have the second pan. I don't think anything in here is particu particularly surprising, but the colors are very beautiful. The sea spray is looking quite blue to me right now. Uh, I want to go ahead and let this sit probably about 10 minutes. The other pan has had more time to sit and sometimes with time, you know, there's colors like hyacinth that sort of disappear when you put it on the yarn and then that color sort of comes back and so that'll give it a little bit of time. But enjoy this smaller swatch photo and shortly we'll come back and look at both pans all together. Now that we have all of our colors here together, there are a few things I would really like to point out. I don't know how much it's showing up on camera, but with our moss green avocado 
and sage leaf. You can see some speckles in there now with the sage leaf. There are little blue speckles in there. The avocado, we can see more of those brown colors. It felt very teal at first, but now more of those colors that actually feel like the outside of the avocado are coming in. And with the moss, you can see some more gr brighter green and some more yellowy kind of colors. Pistachio also has a lot of deeper sort of specks that are coming through as well. And looking at our browns here, the Jacquard Olive does have green notes to it and is much more green than Dharma's Olive, which has some red notes here. Uh, and so it took, I think, some time for some of those blues to really show up, uh, but they seem to be present now. But anyway, these are all of our crude green swatches. And I'm now gonna put up a labeled image that you can screenshot, or I will also have this on my website, chemnitz.com. I have a post that I made in early 2023 that had a bunch of my swatch pictures in it with the color names and brands in the caption so that way you can search the page to find the swatch that has the colors you might want to see. And so this will be there with all of these colors now so that way you can have that as a resource. But if I wanted to make a colorway with five greens that are available, <laughs> I might, you know, pick goodness. I might pick like one of the more yellow greens, um, a brighter green, maybe one of these more deeper teals. Ooh, I guess it might be hard to pick five. You know, maybe, maybe a mint. Uh, it would probably be hard to necessarily pick five, but looking here, you can say, okay, I wouldn't use both of the teals and spruce and forest green, one of these is forest green, together for speckles, they might be more different and more nicely subtly different that you could see if we're doing something more hand painted or with the liquid dyes, but they look similar enough that really with speckles you wouldn't be able to tell the difference very much. So I just came in with a hint of green dye and some water that I'd rinsed off of those popsicle sticks and poured it on the pans. And apparently I was not recording, but so I was just pouring the liquid on. We have no acid in here yet. I'm now adding just a liter of water here. Now, if you wanted to do crude swatches and then see the colors dry, um, so that way you could kind of get a better feel on what the colors might look like dry with speckles. You could do that by doing one crude swatch on each mini skein, and that's something that you could label and have, um, and so that could be a nice way to do that. But what I'm doing here is creating something a little bit softer because we don't have any acid in here yet. And there's some amount of some colors that are gonna be striking already, but there's also gonna be colors that aren't. And so this is allowing me to get some color a little bit all over, spread things out a little bit, and now we'll go get some acid. And I think I'm gonna add three tablespoons of white vinegar to each of the pans. Um, maybe they might end up needing a little bit more, maybe not, but we can use this as a starting point. And this time, as I come and kind of work this acid through a little bit, just stir things up, I'm not moving the yarn as much through the pans because I don't want to like blend things too much. I like these kind of, not quite gradients, but there is almost a gradient feel that we have here going on. But now I'm gonna take these pans over to the stove and we're gonna start heating the yarn so we can set the color. This is just one of the pans. We are across two burners now on my stove top and we're gonna to wanna to heat things for at least 30 minutes uh, to make sure the colors are well set. But some of the greens do take longer, but there isn't a ton of any one color in here. So I think things will probably be okay. It probably shouldn't take too, too long, uh, but we'll check back in after 30 minutes and see if we need to add more acid or what. And then the second pan is on the other side of the stove just off camera. It has been 30 minutes and I know that the water is going to be clear everywhere because I checked both pans after 15 minutes and the water was clear. So I am going to turn off the heat and we're going to 
Hmm. I guess we're going to remove the yarn to help it cool a little faster. And so even though this is dyed in the same pan, there are differences because of the colors that we swatched. And you can really see that with those browner colors that we have at the end. And then this isn't the best angle for the other yarn, but I didn't want to move the camera. But here we also have differences between the two skeins. It's very, very subtle. Um, and yeah, we're going to let the yarn cool completely so we can wash it. Let's wash all of our pretty green yarn. When I eventually list these in my shop, I'll probably name them A, B, C, and D because as we've said, there are some minor differences, well, and some more major differences between the skeins. Um, but they would all work together really, really nicely. All right, let's add a little bit of some dish soap into our water. But the good news is I'm not expecting any bleeding because the colors cleared really quickly. Yeah, and when greens have an issue, then you often will see it in the dye bath. But I'm not seeing any color come out. So let's go ahead and rinse out the soap. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Yep, there is no color coming out, which is great. So I'm going to put this yarn through my spin dryer to remove some of the liquid so it will dry a little faster, hang it up to dry, and well, let's take a look at the finished yarn. We really do have four different green and teal leaning skeins here. The differences are very subtle, but because of the way we were placing our green dyes in the pan and therefore didn't blend things all over in the end, there are differences in here but I think all of them are a lot of fun. And I mean, it's also really fun to imagine how maybe we would place these together as some kind of fade set. I think I might start with that one. This one is a little bit less brown, but it has a teal that is similar with the teal we have in here. And then also we've got some more yellow greens in here, so those go well. And then this one has teals but uh, different blues and stuff. So I think that this is the way I would arrange them if I was gonna use all of them in one project. But I would still recommend blending them a little bit, alternating browns when you're switching. But I actually really, really like this as a set. I'm not gonna list all of the yarn as a set on Etsy, but they will be in one listing as A, B, C, and D, just because Otherwise, I think there's a lot of similarities, and honestly, this helps me when I'm going and fulfilling orders later on. So if you would like to see the yarn that I've dyed, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And finally, before we head off, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of the Chemnitz Fiber patrons, including Karen Siegel, Jessica Parco, Don Jans, Tamara Spanez, and the rest of the names that you see on the screen right now. Patreon is a really great platform where you can help support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. You can find more information at patreon.com slash Chemnitz, and I will have the Patreon linked down in the video description. And now as we sign off this video, I want to show you again the labeled green images that you can screenshot and save. And while we're on it, I'm also going to share the images from all of the pink, all of the purple, and all of the blue acid dyes that I have in my collection. Some of those images, actually I have a few more colors of some other dyes now that I didn't have before. but. I still would like to make it through the rest of the color families, including yellow and orange. And oh, I forgot the reds. I swatched reds at a 1% stock solution. Those pictures I'll share here too. I really hope that all of these swatch videos are as helpful for you as they are for me. I refer to these over and over as I'm planning new colorways. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.